One really cool thing about running your own startup is that you get the opportunity to meet a lot of really, really cool people, um, people you would never imagine to meet if you were at corporate. And uh, today I want to talk about one specific person I met recently that I thought was super, super cool. Uh, his name is Sean Ito. He is a leading member in the sports and music industry. He's been at uh, AVEX for over 25 years which is Japan's leading record label. And he was there to manage and promote major artists, both Japanese and international. And he shared with me some very, very interesting insights about the industry, which I thought really resonated with uh, my struggles in the startup ecosystem as well. I had a really nice time uh, just discussing a lot of different topics, but one big question I had for him was K-pop is thriving. It is absolutely conquering the charts, breaking records, selling seats globally. Um, but why is J-pop not popular globally, internationally? It has its success within Japan, but why are we not seeing it on a global scale? And he says the answer to this is very, very simple. So we, before we talk about that, I want to talk a little bit about the origin of the word K-pop. So K-pop is actually a term that originated from Japan back in the late 90s. This was right after the 80s um, of the J-pop boom when uh, the labels wanted to bring in Korean music into Japan. Now the problem was that the CD stores at the time didn't have a genre for Korean music. It was either Japanese music or foreign music as a whole. So what the labels did was they asked all the CD stores around Japan to create a new genre called K-pop, and that's how it started. Um, in the beginning, they brought in Korean artists like SES and HOT, and they were singing in Korean. But unfortunately, um, it didn't really take off as the way that they had expected and they realized that it was the language barrier that was keeping um, the artist and the consumer to, to connect with each other. So what they did was they brought in a Korean artist to sing in Japanese and that's when it took off. And that was the birth of Boa. Boa is, is now known as an icon in Japan. She was the first Korean person that sang in Japanese, spoke Japanese, um, and really connected with the consumers. So that was the beginning of K-pop, right? Um, now, back to the question, uh, why is J-pop not taking off? Number one, the first thing is the language. Japan, considering how advanced a lot of people may think we are, uh, Japan's English efficiency level is quite low. In 2022, they did a ranking of English efficiency level with 100 countries, and Japan placed at 55. Um, it is said that less than 10% of the popula can, population can actually communicate fluently in English. Uh, compared to Korea, where they actually have a school set up, they actually have a foundation set up for these idols to not only practice to sing and dance, but they also have an education component to it where they can actually learn to speak the language so that when they do sell and become popular, they can actually communicate with their audience. Big difference there. Um, a second one is the adaptation. Now, Japan is a very secure country it is a safe country but we are very afraid of change and i think that goes against any industry and also in the startup culture too people in japan are just afraid of change so back in the 90s when cds was booming and everyone was buying music through cds korea was already one step ahead and putting their music online uh, when we were still connecting to internet with the phone lines, the dee, 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 Korea was already putting their music up online and Japan was still working on, we were selling fine, we were booming with CDs, so they didn't feel the need to put their music online. And Sean actually told me that when he had a meeting with um, the industry people in Korea and they told him about streaming music and about music being online, he said, good luck. Um, now at 2023 most of the music revenue is now coming through from from streaming a lot of the countries have moved away from cds and gone into streaming which actually japan has not japan still about 60 to 70 percent of the music revenue is still coming from cds which is very very high compared to uh, north america latin america india which is about 70 80 percent also korea uh and china's almost about 90 percent is leaning on streaming 
So we're just quite behind. So that goes along with so many things. We're just, we just don't adapt to changes quickly enough. And we are just, if it works, we'll just keep it this way. And we've been moving this way for such a long time, but now the slow adaptation is just becoming so evident that we are getting left behind. So will J-pop ever surpass K-pop? He doesn't think so. And I agree to that statement, not just in the music industry, but really anything. If Japan doesn't learn to adapt to new changes quickly enough, we are going to get left behind. Um, I think until now, Japan has just been in this mindset of if it's working, it's fine. Um, why try to you know, risk something if it's working as it is in the country? Um, but I think we are getting to a stage where we do, we are kind of forced to think on a global scale and we are capable of that. There are so many just talented, intelligent, smart people in the country. We just need to learn to, to, to utilize those talent and, and help globalize our culture a little bit more. But this conversation I had with Sean was just super inspiring. Um, thank you, Sean, for your time. Um, I really learned a lot and uh, I have so many other insights and I have so many other conversations I've been having with different people and I'm, I'm hoping I can share it like this. So uh, follow along.